Industry Insider Nutshell, the show where we sail into our port of call discussing maritime history. For today's video, I've decided to do something a little bit fun and different. Now, I haven't really done a what if video before, but after having to think about it, I thought for Britannic Month, why not? So. I just randomly did it out of the blue. The what if video is based on some research that I have looked into in previous ships like the Lusitania, but when I did the research, I thought, okay, that would absolutely make sense. And yeah, that's definitely all I could say on this one. So without delaying any further, because saving it for a long intro, here is the video of what if the HMHS Britannic didn't sink. On the morning of the 26th of February 1914, the RMS Britannic was given a small ceremony at the Harlander Wharf shipyard where she was launched from slipway number two and glided down into the waters of the Victoria Channel. The Britannic's beginnings were looking optimistic, but by the summer of that year, Britain and Germany were at war. Because of the war, the British government requisitioned liners into either troop ships or hospital ships and were given stations to take soldiers to their stations or take on wounded passengers for medical treatment. The Britannic was requisitioned by the government into a hospital ship and thus she became the HMHS Britannic, never given the luxuries that her two elder sisters had. Two years later, she sank off the Kia Channel after taking on duties from the Cunard liner, the RMS Aquitania, which was damaged in a violent storm. While the Britannic was at the bottom of the Argentinian Sea, the Aquitania would continue sailing and serve as a troop ship during both world wars until her retirement in 1950. But if history was altered, what would have happened? In this video, we are going to dive deep into an alternative universe where the HMHS Britannic never sank. On the 12th of November 1916, the HMHS Britannic left Southampton docks and she began to head towards her destination, Athens. On her way, the vessel made a brief stop in Gibraltar and a refuel in Naples. Afterwards, she headed towards the Porto di Napoli, where she would rest before continuing on her journey towards the Kia Channel. Once outside the port, the crew would have heard that she was to be switched with another hospital ship, the Cunard liner, the HMHS Aquitania. The reasons for this are unknown, and there are no surviving records to determine the immediate change. However, while in the port, the Britannic had been witness to a storm which was to halt her journey. This event was described in the words of Nurse Winifred Greenwood, who said, There was a terrific storm in the channel and we had to hang about outside as the ship was too large to be navigated safely in a small space. During the few moments we were on deck, I saw two waves go right over the bridge. A rogue wave, estimated to be at least 80 feet high, had damaged the Britannic's bridge by shifting it back a couple of inches and left what people thought permanent damage. The wave had also flooded inside the wheelhouse, damaged the crow's nest, damaged several of her lifeboats and bent her davits. Luckily, the bulkheads and the watertight doors in the bow were unharmed. But because of the damage, the Britannic was unable to travel into the port. Her scouts, doctors and nurses had to be dismembered from the Britannic and transferred to the Aquitania, where her original plans were rescheduled to take the wounded soldiers to the Kia Channel. Britannic's captain, Charles Bartlett, and a few crew members had to stay behind with the ship. Later on, the Britannic would be returned to the White Star Line in Belfast after being repaired and disarmed. On the morning of the 21st of November 1916, the Aquitania struck a mine planted by the German submersible U-73 and sank off two miles, three kilometres, of the Greek island of Kia. 
Despite further repairs being carried out at the Harlander Wharf shipyard, HMHS Britannic was discharged as a hospital ship as her bridge was too badly damaged. She wouldn't sail again until after the war when she was given the task of conveying North American troops to Britain. In the 1920s, she began transatlantic services, taking on passengers from Southampton, Cherbourg and Queenstown, which was renamed Cove in 1921, to New York City. When the Great Depression hit the shipping industry, the White Star Line and the Cunard Line came together to create the new Cunard White Star Line. However, this collaboration paid a price as many of the White Star Liners were retired and the Britannic would be one of them, particularly because of her bridge, which was never fully prepared. She retired not long after her elder sister, the RMS Olympic, in the autumn of 1935. The RMS Britannic would be scrapped in the winter of the following year. What do you think of this alternative universe? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe for future videos. Until next time, this has been History Inside a Nutshell, departing from the dogs. Thank you so much for all of your support and enjoy the rest of your voyage.